Oh, this is, we're on the Provo River here, not far below Jordan L. This is Sam. He's skating a caddis. Now, now, of course, he's not casting like a champion caster, but that open loop he's throwing is, actually makes it easier for him to, to uh, get this, to get that caddis out there the way we want to. He's got a fish on. Now, we we're showing you this uh, uh, to to prove or, or or give you the example. It's really quite easy to fish with with dry flies compared to the deep fishing with nymphs and so forth. Because it's visual. You, you cast out, you see the fish come up and so forth. Now, this is not a big fish, and, and the, the, the illustration part of this of this video, it's not big fish. It's about, it's about the, the action you, that you cast and so forth. As it's getting darker, I got out there and, and uh, was, uh, I put Sam on the camera and uh, I adjusted, of course, but put him on the camera. Then I went out to to show him how to do it with a little longer casting, a little bit more, a little more, more technique. I have to say that you say, "Well, old Sam just caught a little fish." No, <laughs> he he caught a big fish. But when he when he was when we when I got him in this place to get the big fish, I wasn't I didn't use the camera. I had to had to give him I had to had to uh, be there with him because he had. Had the big one on. It took took like five minutes to land it. Now I've got a picture of it. It's not a very good picture, but well, I wouldn't say it's not a good. Very, it's a good picture, but I don't know if that's enough definition. But trust me, Sam caught a big one. Okay. Now you notice I'm I'm casting kind of easy there. I'm not throwing a really hard, fast. Uh, uh, I'm not doing as, as Steve Ray Jeff would say. I'm not casting high speed, high line. I'm throwing a little bit of more, more of an open loop uh, for, for, for various reasons. Uh, I've got a, 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 a dry fly with large hackles and if I throw it too hard, it flattens the hackles out. So I'm just skipping it in along the top of the water. You just drag it in. Now these, these fish are, as, as you would say, they're jaded in here. You just drag it in, they just ignore it. But if it's, if it's skipping along in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a kind of a haphazard, erratic manner, and then they get excited and uh, they chase it. As it gets darker, uh, it's, it's even better, but up to a point, when it, when it gets too dark, then, then you can't see the fly. For me, that might be a good thing because when a big one comes up, uh, I, uh, I often pull it out of its mouth. I uh, had one the other day that came up 20 feet away, and it was in. I mean, there was rapid noise, and noise of the rapids in the background, and I heard him suck it in, 20 feet away. But or we tried to suck it in, he didn't. I pulled it out of his mouth. Uh, I do that all the time. 50 years of experience doesn't doesn't make you uh, 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 tough enough to to let, wait for a fish like that to to close his mouth and go down. That's what you should do with dry flies, big fish. They're slow. They come up, they got a big mouth. Let them go down with the fly and then set the hook. I, sometimes I can do that, but I can't do it at night when I'm skating the caddis. I just don't, I don't, I don't have it. Maybe one of you could do it. Now, as it gets darker, uh, really dark, then you can't see the, see the caddis. There's one jump for it. It's fun, they dance around, they jump over it. Sometimes, it, sometimes the really big ones come up for it. But when it gets too dark, you can't see it. And then, then we then we change to something else like a soft tackle or something. I like to like to use a black ant and cast it out when it starts to get dark, and uh, just hold the rod tip down near the water and make a slow retrieve. And then you then you're fishing by feel. It's too dark to see otherwise. So I had this medium-sized fish. It's not a very big fish, but I'm bringing it in, and so Sam's going to be the guide. He's going to come and get it with a net. Anyway, I called him. Sam's a fisherman. He, he's a, he's an active spinner fisherman, and uh, he's an excellent athlete. He's a first-rate uh, uh, tennis player. His school team does very well. So he said, "You win a net of fish. You wait till the right moment. You make one scoop. That's what you do." Open Sam will do that.
Ja. So Sam, you're using the dry fly. How were you? How were you fishing it? Uh, I was casting it out far, and then I made the dry fly look like it's alive by moving the end of the rod. Just a small movement. What? What did the fish do then? Uh, the fish jumped in like, out of the water, grabbed onto the fly, and then I reeled it in. And you didn't really reel it. It took, it took us like five minutes, then. Yeah, it took us like around five minutes, yeah. You unreeled us there for a while. Yeah. How big was it? Show us with your hands. It's about 18 inches. That's right, yeah. That was a big thing. What kind of trout was it? It was a brown trout. Brown yeah, okay. yeah. So you got it on a dry fly. What color was the dry fly? I thought it was like brownish, tannish. Yeah. And why do we think that was good? It was because it was like the same color as the moths that were like in the area. Yeah, like the, the little caddis we saw the we saw the uh, uh, the little cases where they had stuff. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. You ever caught a trout on a dry fly before? No, I haven't. You're a good fisherman though. You use what spinners and stuff? Yeah. You know how to fish. Oh, great. All right. Thanks. Cool. All right. Okay. That's good. Let's get you back fishing.